Hi folks, uh, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. I thought just to change it up, uh, I'd record it in a different spot today because our coffee shop was way busy uh, and I thought I'd do it in a different spot, but we'll go back to that. Today my post is about what is atherosclerosis or heart disease and how does it develop? And I just wanted to walk you through the steps of development and how different aspects of treatment try to tie into these steps of development. The heart is supplied by three major blood vessels called coronary arteries, but the same dance that is going on in the coronary arteries is happening in other blood vessels in the body. So if you look on this slide, think about the three blood vessels that are supplying the heart muscle and as atherosclerosis or coronary artery disease and that's how I'm going to refer to it starts developing the arteries start getting smaller and smaller the first step in formation of heart disease is what's called a fatty streak many of us as we age start having this fatty streak and that does not necessarily mean that we are having narrowing of blood vessels because it can be somewhat of a process that the body happens with aging. William Osler, who was a very renowned pathologist who had many wonderful uh, uh, aphorisms or sayings about medicine, uh, is reported to have said, atherosclerosis is a song that starts in the cradle and ends in the grave. And I think what he was meaning was that this is a process that can gradually happen. So the fatty deposit that you're seeing on these slides is fat that's getting under the surface of the lining of the blood vessel. And over a period of time, this fatty streak can become something more dense. And that's what I want to show you. What you're seeing now is a cross section of blood vessels, which show this blood vessel getting narrowed and this what we would call this plaque uh, that is developing inside the coronary, uh, coronary blood vessels. The risk factors for development of this process include high cholesterol, high cholesterol in the diet, high cholesterol in the body that circulating can get deposited, high blood pressure by putting strain on that lining of the blood vessels that we are seeing, that plaque can be a problem. Alcohol can be a problem, stress can be a problem, being overweight can be a problem. Smoking is a super huge risk factor that allows that fatty plaque to grow. There's a phenomenon called insulin resistance, which is another risk factor, and that is defined as having slightly high blood sugars, gut fat, high blood pressure, all of these combined together can drive what's called insulin resistance. What's happening there is that the body's ability to process glucose goes out of whack. Age is a big risk factor. As we age, things start not working right, you know, sometimes. And a sedentary lifestyle. And also, if one has family history of heart disease, uh, that goes into it. I would direct you to a risk estimator called www.cvriskcalculator.com. This can give you a summary of your chance for risk uh, uh, of having heart disease. Uh, you can calculate that based on your own health history. If the risk is less than 5%. You're considered having low risk. Borderline is between 5 to 7.5. Intermediate is uh, around 7.5 and high is you know when it's greater than 20%. The second aspect of it is that we are using calcium scoring or trying to figure out if there is little deposits of calcium into that plaque that can be picked up by means of a CT. These ca this calcium scoring can give us a sense of what one's risk is. And that's what cardiologists sometimes use. Calcium scores of zero suggest low risk. 
greater than 100 may be a higher risk and between 1 and 99 are somewhere in the middle but calcium scoring of that plaque that we're talking about can give us a sense how far along this road we are in development of disease. The next slide uh, uh, shows us the final step. In other words, we've talked about the fatty streak. The fatty streak then because of all of these risk factors can become a plaque. A plaque, and I hope I'm getting the pronunciation right. Uh, the plaque is just a, you've seen the photographs of it. It's kind of, you think about it like grout in our pipes. But the last step is then when you, we get problems such as a heart attack is when this plaque becomes unstable and it's kind of flapping in the flow of blood and suddenly it breaks open and there's a whole amount of inflammation develops and there's a clot that then blocks the rest of it. So you can see it, the plaque is formed, this plaque rupture and once the rupture happens that area shuts off completely and that's when we go in to emergency rooms with severe pain that can range from just chest pain to having a heart attack which is what what and what we mean by that is that the heart muscle starts dying because of decreased blood supply so therefore in summary today what i was trying to give you a sense is what's happening in these three blood vessels of the heart how a, a fatty streak can go all the way to a plaque and how a plaque can then rupture and we talked about some risk factors that we can all work on uh, along with our providers to decrease our own chance of getting to this point of block rupture. I hope you find this useful. Uh, let me know if you, want to cover, if you want me to cover this more in depth and I hope to see you again next week.